I will call the second pump B. The pump will give to the system some energy in order to overcome the losses in the system. So typically, the delta H due to the pump is a certain expression which we can write as alpha minus beta q to the power two, where q is the flow rate, alpha and beta will be given to you. We want to estimate the flow rate at the exit. So in this point, I will call it point one. So we want to know Q, the total flow rate. How to solve this problem? We know that this system is in parallel. So I will tell you, for example, to do not consider end losses. So your pump has to fight against only the major losses in pipe A and pipe B. It means that delta H of the pump will be equal to the energy, the head loss in pipe A plus the energy loss in pipe B. Okay? But the system is in parallel. HA will be equal to HB. So it will be equivalent to say two times HA. Now, let me move forward. We know that HA will be equal to HB. We did a similar example during the lecture. So we can write eight flow rate in pipe A to the power two divided by pi power two G diameter of pipe A to the power four friction factor L A D A Q A is the flow rate in pipe A D A is the diameter of pipe A F A is the friction factor of pipe A L A is the length of the pipe. So here we have, give me one second. F A, L A, D A. And here we have F B, L B, D B. The problem, this data will be given to you. If H A is equal to H B, it means that I can write this. This being equal to I believe that everyone will agree. Now, someone will ask, do I need to remember this formula? You do not need to remember this formula because if you check the formula sheet, this formula is given to you. I know that there are few formulas over there, but the formulas that are there are those you need to solve the questions at the exam. So don't be upset or don't be scared. From this, we can obtain that if the pipes, if FA is equal to FB and DA is equal to DB, From this, we obtain QB equal to square root of LA divided by LB times QA. 
the total flow rate, then will be Q equal to QA plus QB equal to one plus square root of LA divided LB QA. You know LA because it's an and LB because these are inputs of the problem. In order to find the flow rate Q, the only thing you are missing is QA. Let's compute QA. So let me delete something. So above, before we say that delta H of the pump will be equal to two times H A, which is two times eight pi power two G D A to the power four F A, LA over DA, QA to the power two. This thing will be equal to alpha minus beta Q power two. But Q is this quantity. So will be equal to alpha minus beta, which multiplies one plus square root of LA divided L B Q A this thing to the power two. Let's analyze this equation. We know G, we know the A, we know FA, LA, DA. We know alpha, we know beta, we know L B. We have one equation in one unknown, and we solve it for QA. Once we obtain QA, we substitute it here, and then we obtain the total flow rate. We did this example together during our uh, lectures. Who is not convinced about this um, example? Please tell me now. Or let me ask you something different. Who is convinced? Thanks, Babar. Thanks, guys. OK, so I will expect that you will be able to solve an example like this one, OK? Now, let me play another game. Just let me delete. Okay, I received an, an interesting question from Ada. What if we have two pumps in parallel? So you will have always the same statement that delta, let me write, delta H of the pump will be equal to FA, uh, HA plus HB which in the case you had before, you have alpha minus beta Q power two, because you have one pump. If you have two pumps, 
delta h of the pump will be alpha minus beta q power two for pump, let's say one plus um, gamma minus delta q power two for pump two. This thing will be equal to h a plus h b. Do you agree, Ada? Please tell me if you agreed or not. Yes, H A is equal to H B, so equal to two H A. Welcome. Now, in the system we draw before, just let me delete again. So we have something like this, the pump here, one pipe, another pipe connecting here and so on. But in this case, Delta H of the pump has to fight against the losses in the two pipes. But you can have a situation where you have a pipe, a pump here, which has to drive a flow until this point, I will call it one. And there is a certain difference in the elevation, delta Z, okay? In this case, delta H of the pump will be equal to, I will call this pipe, pipe A, will be equal to the head loss in pipe A plus the difference in the elevation. You can imagine that a pump has to fight against the energy loss in the pipe plus um, the um, energy need to overcome the difference in the elevation to bring water from bottom to the top. Okay, so please do not forget this additional term if you will have a difference in the elevation between two points. Please keep in mind another thing that I can also ask you, for example, to quantify I can also ask you to quantify the head loss due to uh, due to major losses in a pipe, which let me remind you that is something like velocity power two two g f l over d. And I can tell you that you have a pipe of a certain diameter d of a certain length L and the Reynolds, I will give you the Reynolds number. I want you to estimate the head loss. So you have D, you have L, you know the gravity acceleration, you need to compute U and F. So in order to compute u, u is simply Reynolds number times dynamic viscosity divided by diameter times density. You have everything. I will give you mu and rho. You can compute u and then you can substitute here. Then you miss You miss F. 
Uh, you are posting a couple of questions. I will reply once uh, I end this uh, example. Then you need F. You have to distinguish if your flow is laminar or turbulent. So if Re is less than 2300, you are in front of a laminar flow. And that is 64 divided by Reynolds. This session is recorded, yes. If Reynolds is larger than 2300, the flow is turbulent. And then F is 0 0.316. F, mm, sorry, Reynolds to the power one minus one over four. You can compute F, substitute here, and then you have all the ingredients to compute the head loss. Now, let me reply to two questions. Okay, but in pipe in parallel connected pipes, when there is no pump, we say that HT is equal to HB equal to HA. Why do we need to add them like in series now? Let me explain. You have two pipes in parallel, okay, where the head losses are identical. Fair enough. But you have a pump which wants to drive the flow through this system. Okay, you will have energy losses in pipe one by A, energy losses in pipe B. The pump has to fight against both. This is why you add the two terms. This is why you say delta H pump equal to H A plus H B. Then there is another question. If there are two pumps in parallel with a pump in each pipe, Yes, it will be different, but it will be, um, you are right, John, what you wrote, but this is far more complicated than what we did during the, um, the examples. But the way your reasoning is correct. Now, let me move forward. Okay, let me stop sharing here. Okay. Okay, the last topic we went through was open channel flows. Let me remind you just a few important things about open channel flows, and then we will make an example. Uh, there are uh, Um, so there is another question just before let me reply. So uh, the Reynolds number I will type in the chat. Okay. Is equal to U times diameter divided by nu. Nu is the kinematic viscosity. But the Reynolds number can be written as U times D times Rho uh, 
One second, let me recheck. Divided by mu, where mu is the dynamic viscosity. The kinematic viscosity nu is mu divided by rho. Okay. So this is why sometimes you say you there is the viscosity and sometimes there isn't because we are using two different viscosities. Okay. So do you use Moody's when the flow is fully turbulent? You use Moody's chart only if I will take you to uh, if I will tell you to take into account for the roughness of the pipe. If the roughness of the pipe is not mentioned, no need for Moody's chart. How to know if viscosity is dynamic or kinematic? I will tell you. Of course, if I use nu kinematic, if we use mu is dynamic, but we will mainly use mu. If the pipe is moot, I suggest you to use the formulas. Uh, yes, you have to convert to meter to sec uh, divided by second to the power three. If I will give you in liters, of course. Let me move forward. So what you need to remember mainly is the type. Uh, rotational speed is RPM. Type of flow. You can have steady or unsteady flow, depending on the fact that the water height will not change or will change in time. We will consider only steady flows and you can have a uniform or varied flow. The flow is uniform, is whatever section you will take, the flow characteristics will be the same. Otherwise, the flow will be varied. Here you have an example. You have a uniform flow, which is approaching a sudden step. So the uniform flow first will change its water height very slowly, then there will be a sudden change in the water height. And then a gradually varied flow and a uniform flow again. So if there is a sudden change in your uh, channel, the flow here will be a rapidly varied flow. Henry, the formula in the turbulent flow, if you mean this formula. Henry, do you mean this formula? Please remember it. I'm making the examples very easy, but I need you to remember at least something. If the flow is turbulent, is this. If the flow is not turbulent, is this one. That's it. Are very trivial. Okay, Henry? Welcome. So please keep in mind that the flow, when there is a sudden change in your channel, is a RVF, rapidly varied flow. A uniform flow is a very ideal situation where nothing will vary. Water height flow rate, roughness, slope, cross-section, geometry, everything will remain constant in your channel, okay? Um, the main goal is to characterize the friction in your channel. The most important thing 
the most for, um, important thing to know to do with a uniform flow is to compute the velocity of uniform flow through equation 12, which is known as Manning formula. Uh, Ruben, no iterations during the exam. Um, if Manning formula is not given to you, you do not need to remember Manning formula. Okay? There is in section 3.2 an application with it together of Manning formula for compound and composite section. Please feel free to go through this again. But I need you to remember something. So when the flow is uniform, equation 39 is the so-called condition of uniform flow, which tells you that the slope of the bottom of the channel is equal to the slope of the hydraulic grade line, which corresponds to the water-free surface, which is in turn equal to the slope of the energy grade line. This is known as condition of uniform flow. If your flow is not uniform, this equation does not apply. But uh, Chazy and Darcy Weisbach formula are not even, so you don't need anything about this. Okay, states of the flow is something very important. You can define the Froude number according to equation 44, and you can have three scenarios. First, Froude number less than one, known as subcritical flow. Froude larger than one, known as critical flow. Froude equal to one, known as critical flow. I would expect you to being able to explain figure 16, okay? So the states of the flow. If you're not sure about what is written here, please go through the notes and please have a look at the recordings. And another thing we need to go together, together is represented by some examples. So, okay. In one example, we did the flow through a gate. So, let's say that I have water with this level, which faces. a certain gate. Uh, only, uh, yes, you should be able to explain figure C, to remember, be able to write, to sketch figure 16 about the states of the flows. So here we have a gate, and then water will flow after the gate with a certain level, okay? Here, is the bottom of the channel. I will call, sorry, this water level H1. I will call this water level H2. I want to know in this system which will be the flow rate, okay? So we apply Bernoulli equation between this point and this point. We can write Z1 plus V1 to the power two divided by two G equal to Z2 plus V2 power 2 over 2G. Okay? So Z1 and Z2, this is this, and this is this. V1 
is the flow rate Q per unit width divided by H1. V2 is the flow rate divided by H2. Let me substitute. So we have H1 plus one over two G. Q power two divided H1 power two equal to H2 plus one over two G. Q to the power two, H two to the power two. We did this example together. So we know H1, we know H2, we know the gravity acceleration. We have one equation with one unknown, that is the flow rate. We will solve for the flow rate and we will obtain the uh, correct reply. Now, I, want, I can ask you, for example, to compute the fraud number before and after the gate. So, the fraud number in section one will be V1 divided by square root of G H1. The fraud number in section two will be V2 square root of G H2. V1 is Q divided by H1. V2 is Q divided by H2. That's it. Any question? Uh, I don't think that it will be given. I don't think so, Babar. So you need to remember, mm, let me write something, sorry. There are really few things you need to know. I tell before that the examples are quite easy. We did this together, but I need you to at least know some very basic things. So I expect you to know. Let me write. Ah, Babar is in the formula sheet, right? Okay, thanks. So please keep in mind this thing. I expect you to remember that the friction factor is 64 over Reynolds for laminar flow. F is 0 0.316 F, um, sorry. Reynolds to the power minus one over four if the flow is turbulent. The fraud number is velocity square root of G H, but Babar told me that it is provided. So these are the most complicated formulas you need to remember. S in the manning formula, John, is the slope of the channel. And uh, Mohamed, you ask if these are the most uh, heavily weighted uh, thing. Yes, of course, regarding to my part.
Um, so, uh, guys, let me ask you something. Um, do you need, think that um, you will be able to solve the examples we went through together during the lectures and during the uh, these sessions? Okay, perfect. Also, please have a look at the tutorials, okay? Because some questions might be related to the tutorials. For example, let me sketch something. I have a question, sorry. So temperature, yes, is a primary dimensions. Normal uh, depth and critical depth by Manning formulas. I don't understand this. What do you mean? Ruben, if these equations are not given, maybe you do not need this. James, how the width of the channel affects the height of the flow and its velocity? So you can imagine if you have a certain flow rate, and your channel becomes larger, 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 and larger. Okay, the velocity, the water height will reduce, 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 and reduce. Do you agree, James? Welcome. Um, another thing I have to underline is that during the, uh, the tutorials, you uh, went through some exercises, for example. Uh, oh, sorry, I have a question. How do you calculate normal depth and critical depth to Manning formula? Okay, Manning formula is good. To, uh, through Manning formula, you can calculate the velocity, right? Let me call it D. Then you know that... Um, you should apply the definition of flow rate. If you go through the example, that is written in the notes. There is a way for the one you define V as a function of Y zero. And then you obtain Y zero. And please keep in mind that there is another revision session in the person the day before the exam. So feel free to come and we will go through the example together. Okay. Now, before I will forget, during the tutorials, you did some examples, some exercises. Ada, in the lecture note, you said it's always better to connect pumps in parallel because if you uh, for pumps connected in series. Um, try to post this question in the discussion board, and I will ask the GTA. GTA so went through the tutorials to do to reply you or come to the next revision session in person with the, this tutorial, okay? Okay, there was a problem of... Um, flow, which was flowing with a certain velocity, V, and then you put two uh, stones in the channel, giving two ripples like this one. And you wanted to estimate the stream speed D. If I remember well, the problem will give you the radius, the radii of these two ripples. So please go through this example should be this, maybe the second questions in the tutorial of uh, open channel flows and be able to solve this kind of problem, okay? If you're not sure about it, come to the next session with uh, this uh, tutorial and we will go through it together, okay? Having said that, I think that I did most of what I needed to 
to do. Have you any further question for me? Before I will remind you, please to fill the, um, the unit survey. Uh, Babar, uh, some of the examples we went through together were similar to the last exam paper. Okay, so something might be relatively similar. Okay. Okay, I have another question. Understand what happens to the elevation if the channel width is increased? So I imagine that you want to know what happens to the water height when you have a certain channel and the width will increase. So if the flow rate is constant, okay, the width is increasing, the water height is decreasing. Okay, Sarah? Um, there will be 30 questions, okay? Um, Jamie, please come with this question to the next uh, session because I haven't it on my hands now. Marius, no iterations. Any other question for me? Uh, Ruben, no need to worry about this formula. But it is to compute the hydraulic jump, if I remember well, but no worries. Anything else for me? Uh, I also encourage you to come to the next session, which will be in person. If you have any question related to a specific um, topic, a specific tutorial question or a past exam paper, please come with the paper and we will go through this together. Okay? Are you convinced? Okay, guys, thank you very much for coming. Hope that you will have a great uh, weekend and I will, I look forward to see you in person next week. Thank you very much again. Bye-bye.